Welcome back to another episode of your Digital Hustle News. As always, I'm Wade Teamer. I want it to be known that the following content is for informational purposes only. This content does not in any way reflect financial advice, but it will make you think twice about this coin. This past Friday, from their Binance Russia Twitter page, it was announced that Binance is now a member of the Association of Banks of Russia to provide a dialogue with federal authorities, legislators, and experts in the field of digital financial assets and digital currencies. So this makes two nations that Binance has now positioned themselves with in the last month alone. First was Dubai and now Russia, which is also interesting considering what's going on right now. Binance is a global powerhouse, and I think they are preparing for something massive in the short term. Here's what I'm thinking. So we saw the relationship established in the UAE. Now, the UAE and India are tightening their relationship when it comes to this entire digital transformation altogether. But you want to know what the largest exchange in India is? Wazir X. And who are they owned by? Binance. Let's jump back a little bit. February 1st, Binance stated that getting a crypto debit card into the hands of Ukrainian citizens was their top priority. Then, back in January, they hired former political officials from both countries in an attempt to strengthen their presence within the region. All the while, Russia is still pushing forth crypto regulations against the wishes of their central bank. At the same time, Ukraine has also been very active in the crypto space. Now, this really dates back to last year when they first proposed their bill for the legalization of crypto assets. At the time, most of us just looked at that as an El Salvador type of situation, but that could not be further from the truth. Now, the Ukraine proposed this new law, but it wasn't finalized until the neighboring Russia allegedly started to invade their nation. Prior to this, the Ukraine was already trading more crypto than fiat. So this headline does not surprise me. They definitely have enough of it. But here's what may be even more slightly concerning. On February 16th, the defense ministry suffered a cyber attack directly on their banks. Now, if you go and Google the words Russia and cyber warfare, you will learn that the world sees Russia as a leader in cyber warfare. So again, I say something is going on here. Can't forget about the United States. And wouldn't you know it, Binance has an entire branch located in the US who was once headed by former comptroller of currency, Brian Brooks. Binance.us is now ran by Brian Schroeder, former executive of the Ant Group, who was an affiliate of Chinese mega corporation Alibaba. And he also worked for Uber, which is interesting. But we need to mention Binance.us because now they are also under scrutiny by the SEC for apparently not revealing their relationship with their Chinese market makers who are responsible for a large amount of liquidity management within the platform. Now, whether this is proven to be true or not, what I have seen is that having a relationship with the SEC in this country is almost a given advantage, especially since they just okayed a securities exchange set to launch later this year. Keep this fact in your pocket as we move forward. The relationship between the US and the Ukraine goes all the way back to 2014 when they were identified as a strategic partner. So it's no surprise that in recent weeks we've seen billions of dollars sent to the Ukraine. Now, let's not forget about the annual spending bill that we got last year, which we covered on this channel and learned that it had a very particular focus on emerging technologies. Now, if you want, we can also make this connection because another player in the Ukraine is Stellar Lumens. Stellar Lumens, we know, is also a major player in the United States. We saw that in Congress a few months ago. but. Keep in mind, Stellar also signed a deal with a global cybersecurity firm in the form of GK8. On that note, there's been a lot of talk about cybersecurity recently, hasn't it? 
Well, remember earlier in this episode, we learned that Russia is quite the mighty cyber force. So this could explain the numerous headlines around the fear of cyber attacks. The supposed hacker of Ukraine's banks was Russian. So now the US is preparing our banks for a similar event. Now, this is okay, I suppose, but not really when you think about the large percentage of people in the United States that hold their banks in their pockets. So we are hearing the same theme, cyber defense, underlining this conflict. And we are attempting to connect Binance's position in all of this. Well, back in 2018, Binance Labs invested in a cybersecurity startup called Certic, along with Coinbase, Tiger Global, Yale, and Sequoia Capital. But if you fast forward to this year, Binance joins the National Cyber Forensic and Training Alliance to take a bite out of cybercrime. Essentially, guys, they already have the solution to the reaction. On their blog, they talk about it very prominently particularly in this article titled Five Common Social Engineering and Cyber Attacks and How to Avoid Them. So what's the game plan here? What's the one thing that ties the US, Ukraine, Russia, and Binance? Well, what do we know is currently happening right now? The global transition of banks to the ISO standard. This is the underline to the transition from fiat to digital currency. The Bank of International Settlements is advising numerous central banks on this transition, central banks that include both the Central Bank of Russia and the United States Federal Reserve System. So in essence, what I'm saying here, guys, if we are truly moving towards a fully digital monetary system, an entirely new digital world, and of course that can't be the main focus, people aren't ready for that type of change. And this is not a Binance shill video by any means, because honestly, Binance related videos don't really get traction, which may be significant in and of itself when you consider that YouTube is a search platform. That means that people are not searching for it. Now, keep in mind too that CZ is one of the richest blockchain pioneers. That puts him in very special company. Now, as I was ending this piece, our president was making his announcement on some new sanctions in response to Russia's most recent actions. I want you to notice what the very first sanction is pertaining to. So today, I'm announcing the first tranche of sanctions to impose costs on Russia in response to their actions yesterday. These have been closely coordinated with our allies and partners and will continue to escalate sanctions if Russia escalates. We're implementing full blocking sanctions on two large Russian financial institutions, VEB and their military bank. We're implementing comprehensive sanctions on Russian sovereign debt. That means we've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. It can no longer raise money from the West and cannot trade in its new debt on our markets or European markets either. Starting tomorrow and continuing in the days ahead, We'll also impose sanctions on Russia's elites and their family members. They share in the corrupt gains of the Kremlin policies and should share in the pain as well. And because of Russia's actions, we work with Germany to ensure Nord Stream 2 will not, as I promised, will not move forward. If you found value in this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this information with friends and family. If you're new to crypto, I have links to the most notable exchanges in the description using the links below, supports the channel, and comes with special bonuses for members of our network. For more information on the new economy, check out the playlist related to this episode on the right and our most recent episode on the left. As always, have a great day, have a prosperous day. Most importantly, we making this money. I'll see y'all in the next one.